Over the past year, I've preached on this channel the importance of local politics and the need for black Americans to take that more seriously. The men and women taking up the seats at city council mean far more than the man or woman sitting at the seat of the presidency. It's city council members in New York that gave non-citizens the right to vote in New York local elections without any regards to what that would mean for the city's black population who are far outnumbered by everyone else combined in the state. This bill is taxation with representation. Majority Leader Lori Cumbo questioned the potential impacts on city politics. This particular legislation is going to shift the power dynamics in New York City in a major way. And we do not have the numbers or the information to know how that is going to impact African American communities. Who cares? The non-black city council members of New York City, as well as their non-citizens, sure don't. And now we are seeing firsthand that the non-black Democratic Party city council members of Chicago don't care either because they just recently blocked a $1.6 million settlement that should have been awarded to a black family who were victims of savagery by the Chicago Police Department. An Illinois woman who became partially blind after a violent arrest by Chicago police during the uprising in the days immediately following George Floyd's murder is one step closer to participating in a seven-figure settlement. A Chicago City Council committee voted last week to pay damages to resolve lawsuits brought by those involved in her case and in two other ones brought by citizens claiming harm from police wrongdoings. On Thursday, February 17th, the Chicago City Council Committee on finances voted 13 to 7 to settle for 1.6 million dollars with Mia Wright and four other people with her when she was pulled from her car by at least seven officers in a mall parking lot on May 31st 2020. The officers had been staking out the mall on that day of looting across Chicago and the five were targeted as suspects. Now here's the important part. The committee fell along color lines with only 13 black committee members participating in the meeting, voting for the settlement to the group of five African-Americans. The next step is a vote on the settlement by the full council this week. Alderman Raymond Lopez said in opposing the settlement that the city would be opening a Pandora's box by settling the lawsuit and would give everyone an excuse to start suing. By early last December, the city of Chicago had already paid out more than $67 million in 2021 alone to resolve police misconduct claims. Well, here's an idea. How about the police stop abusing their power and stop engaging in police misconduct? Isn't that what they tell black people all the time? If he would have just complied, he wouldn't have gotten killed. All you have to do is comply. Why is that so hard? Well, on the flip side, if the police would just do their job without acting like savage beasts, then there wouldn't be any need for payouts now, would there? Wright, who would receive the largest payout if approved by the council, says her violent confrontation with the police on May afternoon left her blind in one eye and impeded her dream of becoming a paramedic. Many businesses were closed on that Sunday as protesters over the murder of George Floyd deteriorated deteriorated into looting, but this family says they were only trying to make their way to the mall's target unaware that it had been closed. The 26-year-old former emergency medical technician student claims she was attempting to obey the officer's command and get out of the front passenger seat of her cousin's vehicle. However, before she can get out of the vehicle, one of the cops grabbed her by her hair and pulled her out of the car. After putting her on the ground, he kneeled on her neck. Now, mind you, a full investigation was done and found that this family did absolutely nothing wrong. Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown has already disciplined seven officers for their participation in the incident, and at least one has been recommended to be terminated. But that did not matter to suspected white supremacist Nicholas Spasato, because WTTW reports that Alderman Nicholas Spasato said during the Finance Committee meeting he did not believe Wright and her relatives were at the Northwestern Chicago Mall to shop. 
he asserts they were there to loot stores during the unrest that accompanied the protests. Last week during the committee hearing, Spasado wondered why Wright, who he said lived in the West Side North Lawndale neighborhood, drove to the Northwest Side Mall to shop on a day when Chicago was experiencing extensive, well-publicized public disturbances following the Floyd murder. Oh, so now it makes sense. They were on the wrong side of town. And if you're black on that side of town, you must be trying to steal because obviously that's the only logical conclusion there is. Got it. Now, this past Wednesday, city council was supposed to vote on paying out the settlement to which Wright would receive $650,000 in the preceded $1.6 million settlement and the others in her group would be awarded $243,750 each. That's what was supposed to happen, but let's see how that actually played out. Alderman blocked a $1.6 million taxpayer-funded settlement Wednesday for a group including a woman who was dragged from her car by Chicago police at the Brickyard Mall in the tumultuous days after the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Four members of the city council used a parliamentary maneuver to delay the vote on the proposed payment for Mia Wright and others. Several members of the city council have opposed the deal, and the debate at a recent committee meeting spurred a heated talk about black Chicagoans' rights and their treatment by police. The aldermen who moved to defer the settlement were Raymond Lopez, Felix Cardona, Nick Spasato, and Silvana Tabarez. Now, for as much as the Democratic Party loves to cry over the filibuster, which is consistently exercised by the Republicans, essentially what these Democrats did in Chicago City Council was filibuster the ability of the other city council members to be able to vote yes on paying out the $1.6 million settlement to the black family that was violently assaulted by the police. And they did this because they knew they did not have enough city council members to vote against it. But here's what I find even more interesting is that that same day, Chicago City Council did this. Also Wednesday, the city council passed a $1.2 million settlement for Hamner Orozco Corretto and Carlos Ramirez, two men who said an off-duty Chicago police officer shot at them while they were parked on Irving Park Road in the Albany Park neighborhood in December 2020. So as you can see, these same city council members did not oppose giving out money when it was going to these Hispanic men. But when it was time to pay off the black family, now all of a sudden they're filibustering the vote in an attempt to prevent them from getting what's rightfully theirs because apparently, according to Mr. Raymond Lopez, that would be opening Pandora's box. Now, there are multiple examples of situations like this going on all throughout the country, and I've spoke on them before, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to get into all that right now. Just understand that this is very common, and this is why local politics matter. Who's in your city council matters. It matters a lot more than who's sitting in that presidency. But that's just me. So with all that being said, that does it for today's video. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. All social media links will be pinned in the comment section below. Please make sure you text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That's TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That way you'll get a direct text notification whenever I release a new video, but it also serves as a protection plan for myself in case YouTube ever gives this channel the axe. I'll be able to send you a direct link to where you can find me next. And last but not least, for those of you who have a love and appreciation for the work that I put in on this channel, the number one way you can show your support is through Patreon for only $3 a month. That will help put me in position to take TD Hip Hop Media off of YouTube. Remember, the goal is not to grow big on YouTube, but to grow independent of YouTube. And for those who have issues with joining Patreon, you could also hit the join button that's next to the subscribe button and that way you can become an official channel member for as little as three dollars a month as well and lastly if you have not already please make sure you join the emailing list there is no way that i can go independent of youtube if i cannot take the audience with me and the link to that will be pinned in the comment section as well thank you for your time and until the next video peace